Welcome to Future of the Core Banking, uh, a knowledge roundtable, and in a post-COVID era. Today is a very interesting uh, subject. We are discussing back office core banking platform and how that is changing in our post-COVID era. I have an esteemed panel with me, uh, the three people, uh, Mr. Ramakrishnan Shankar, is from TCS, one of the leading co-banking supplier. Mr. Rahil Iqbal, who is a board member and a founder of Codebase. And we have Mr. Venkat from Explio, which has been one of the leaders in QA space for co-banking. So welcome everyone, and great to have you on the panel. So let's understand what's uh, the co-banking future which we are discussing. So as all of you know, core banking has been traditionally a centralized back office system. And with the world shifting because of COVID, it has majorly got impacted. So let's quickly hear from our users in terms of what do they expect from next generation of core banking. So I'm just launching a poll will request each one of you to take a minute to vote for what do you believe is the single most important feature for the next generation of core banking yeah let's give it a 30 seconds to see what people are selecting and be pretty interesting to see the results uh, meanwhile uh, if you look at globally it's a 1,600 plus co-banking deal in last three years. So that's quite an impressive number of close to 500 plus deals in each of the year. And if you see America has grown from 230 a year to 291 with 5.7 FIS and Finistra taking the major part of the deal. Europe is degrowing in terms of the number of deals per year. 115 to 65, mainly because of recession as well as COVID impacts, and of course COVID strike in 90 days itself. The MENA, again, there is a lower investment over the last three years, as most of the markets are investing in digital and middle office layer. And again, you can see there from TCS to Terminos to many other tier two suppliers also making roads in MENA. And Asia Pack, Interestingly, is continues to grow 20% up in three years with TCS, Oracle, Infosys, Seminars having an equal share of the play there. So I think we have got a very interesting set of results and I'll now just publish it out. So as you can see, it's very, very interesting results. What people expect from a next generation core banking, almost 56% have voted for microservices and API. And, and there's an equal share between functionality and cloud capabilities. Very, very interesting workflow capabilities. People don't think that's anything which next generation should carry. Very interesting outcome. And I think we have a very, very similar way forward. If you see the trends, these are the next generation players, and these are new, new gen players where you have Mambu, Fedor, 10X, Nimbus, Codebase, first time code banking, uh, single product to multi product, API based, cloud ready. So that's exactly what users mention as well, as most of the viewers preferred an API enabled co banking. So that's one of the major trends in upcoming core banking. Now, when we observe the core banking, I think there are six major features which people are looking for when we talk to banks, both tier one and tier two. First and foremost, um, a core banking being a monolithic system, people have started componentizing the functional modules. So lending only, deposits only, so on and so forth, liabilities only, assets only, kind of modular architecture. So 
so it's upgradable in module replace in a module second major expectation is on enhanced ui ux right from a black screen co-banking has come long way many banks also give multiple form factor based ui ux which can be used on a tablet by sales teller and service guys so enhanced ui ux is one of the key criteria when people look at the next generation ensuring it's a single screen touch screen kind of a view forward third open api we discussed api is a major trend open api specifically has become a regulatory guideline um, in each market and again api is our multiple types so we have moved away from a soap based web services to more restful api which can be consumed in standardized more easily so again people are moving away from the generation 1 of middleware or esb to the next generation of api gateways so that again is one of the major trends uh moving to the compliance again has become a major area where compliance as insisted on ifrs 9 dumps for downstream system patca was always available now crs is coming in europe as a mandatory psd2 based open i open api frameworks are becoming mandatory and central banks are very particular that the new generation co banking are out of the box compliant banks are also trying to be majorly spending on to compliance with respect to customer due diligence and aml and kyc this a very interesting feature of extensibility so traditionally co banking as used to be developed in offshore supplied to the client and client used to predominantly be a user so banks have changed they are now extending uh main co banking with new modules new screens they are insisting on api designs and api tools so that they can build their own restful api for the period of time also the reusable components bank would like to reuse workflow rules engine and many of such components while upgrading their systems with the latest accessibility toolkit also the customization is more changing now to personalization and bank wants to personalize their co banking systems to achieve efficiency and effectiveness last but not least the cloud native the cloud has been a major trend it's been around for 2 to 3 years now but there was an adoption challenge and again uh, later in the presentation we'll discuss with rahel because he's launched a cloud based co banking system and we'll invite him to give his views but cloud native is one of the key requirements for the tier 1 and tier 2 banks tier 2 banks mainly because they cannot handle the cost of on prem infrastructure as well as cannot provide for it team and management capability the tier 1 is more of a modern on the cloud again there is a series of supplier available azure which is opened up in the most of the middle east countries now and out aws has been there in bahrain for a while it's also approved by bahrain tech hub and central bank of bahrain open shift which is mostly provides a container for publishing the native apps and many of the co-banking suppliers have been able to ensure that the cloud native aspect is provided so moving on to the trend uh, if you see how does that impact it in a post covid situation there is a significant push towards the licensing model which is a low cost on cloud based on pay as you go model delivery team has shifted thanks to covid most of the work has moved offshore or work from home devops has become significantly more important deployment model has cloud wherever banks have been on the cloud their suppliers have been able to support them much better than an on premise infrastructure because of limitations as well as automation model right traditionally it's been a more manual testing manual delivery has changed 
to an automation base because people no more have the budget which they used to carry prior to COVID-19. So again, uh, with CEDA, we've been helping many banks and most of our programs and success stories have moved from working from home and remotely with agile collaboration with daily huddles, agile program management using the backlogs and Kanban boards, and governance forums, including steering committees, have also moved with a significant number of tool usage, right from a Jira, Confluence, Zapier, Trello, to a Zoom team-based video conferencing. So let me invite my colleague and the first speaker, Mr. Shankar from TCS, uh, to present his screen, as well as take us through as a tier one supplier with 450 implementation, TCS is one of the leading co-banking supplier and Shankar has been with TCS for 14 years doing the product management. Let me invite Shankar. Uh, good afternoon, uh, good morning, good evening, wherever, whichever part people are joining in. Uh, uh, thanks for the introduction and uh, context setting, uh, Chetan. Uh, so let me just bring up my uh, screen. So this is, uh, you know, the first thing is the current era or the new era demands a completely a different mindset, right? Uh, TCS as a you know, business 4.0 is a TCS thought leadership framework, which actually talks about how enterprises or financial institutions can leverage the digital technologies to further strengthen their growth and transformation agendas. In essence, it's, a, it's actually a combi it, it combines the critical technologies that are driving this revolution, but more importantly, talks about business behaviors that characterize the success in the digital transformation. These business behaviors can be classified into four major aspects. The obvious one, tailor and mass customize. Uh, which is, which is, you know, today, uh, when we say mass customization, we are seeing organizations, financial institutions, banks, they go to the extent of even a single customer offering a product and service to a customer is also a segment. So that's a level of mass customization is what, you know, banks are willing to get into. The second, sorry. Okay. The second uh, uh, business behavior is leveraging ecosystems. Obviously, you know, thinking of operating through horizontal collaboration. That's the power of uh, leveraging ecosystems. And in fact, there is a major mind shift that is happening even in the current context, even though the business 4.0 was, uh, was introduced last year, even in the current context, it works very well in the sense that people are, uh, financial institutions are thinking from product centric approach to purpose centric approach. And similarly, a firm centric approach to <coughs> value centric approach. So, so the, the, the mindset is, uh, you know, literally changing in the current era. The third important value is the, you know, create exponential value. So when we say create exponential value, provide, offer value to our customers and also offer value to our stakeholders. And last but not the least, the, how do we, you know, embrace risk, our approach to risk, willingness to embrace risk, put that in the heart of the overall strategy. And all these four, you know, business behaviors are pretty much supported by, you know, the current trends of, you know, today you don't call it as, you know, digital core. You know, the, we have gone one level we are above, call it as intelligent core, the agile technologies, how automation and cloud, all these four concepts, uh, Chetan definitely touched upon, but that's, that's where we are, Kind of heading to. Now the APIs 
open banking context, right? Today, if you see how APIs are enabling core banking, op op open banking is meant to break down the antiquated conservative model of generic financial services. Right? That's, that used to be the case. And now it's, 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 it's becoming a completely uh, different model, business model itself. And today, especially in this current COVID-19 context, we are seeing a lot of SMEs you know, benefit out of this open banking revolution. And obviously possibilities are immense. Some of the examples I try to bring in here are, you know, optimizing business lending, stimulus package distribution. This is something which, you know, uh, how APIs have enabled. That's a very interesting uh, concept here. Work with fintechs and banking associations to ensure that, you know, APIs are able to deliver the money. Right. Third, the whole partnership between banks and APIs, fintechs, or incumbents. The fourth important aspect, control over the financial data. Now, regulators are also started thinking, you know, in the current context, how do we even enable PSD2 is also giving some more additional enhancements to this. Uh, another important aspect is how do we connect payment capacity with accounts, right? Looping into clients' data, banks' data, streamline some of the data collection, reconciliation, uh, bring in analytics, and then, uh, in fact, information is more quickly and securely in a real-time manner. And COVID-19 has pushed most of the banks to provide digital banking services to their customers because the demand has really gone up because people cannot move out. They want to be in their homes. So I think that made indirectly banking to push into this you know, API world. If the banks are not able to support these marginal customers, what we call it as marginal customers, they should be using their open APIs platform to encourage the stakeholders, right? The fintechs to support that. <clears throat> Just give you a, uh, you know, an end-to-end -end lending, you know, we worked with, a, you know, with the final stages of a bank, which is actually trying to launch this, uh, right from customer acquisition to actually disperse the funds. They want to run this whole digital lending for SMEs, what they call it as in six minutes with six clicks, right? And so we how do you achieve that, right? You need to have a, a strong connection of API, strong connection, mm -hmm. you know, even behavioral scoring through uh, uh, analytics and wherever possible, we use machine learning capabilities to get, you know, the document scanning uh, the, for the whole OCR concept of, you know, let's say in a country, you want to upload the, the ID card and then translate the information from the ID card. That, whole mechanism is it's all built on machine learning. Artificial intelligence will be used in social behavioral tracking and in alternate data sources. So, so right from discovery, application, verification, approval, you may connect to external world. You may be doing, uh, you know, making internal uh, uh, connections to your core banking backend. All of them end-to-end -end digital lending you know, it's, it's all, it's, it's a very fantastic use case. And, and this is not one aspect of the, you know, use case, I would say there are much, much more, uh, you know, the limitations are not there at all. Uh, that then, now what has happened, you know, because of this digital expectations and COVID-19 issues, it has put the digital transformation at fast track. Interestingly, you know, when, when Chetan put the poll, 56% said, you know, uh, we look at microservices. So, which is a clear evidence that, you know, banks will try and shift en masse to a cloud-based microservices architecture in the next few years. That's what we are going to really see that. And uh, the, in fact, the core method of communication between machines will be APIs, right? armed with the microservices-based architecture. I think the new core will have 
much more enablers to shift this to a new architecture and we have we have already started seeing that kind of a trend a uh, couple of banks are starting creating their entire cif as a microservice to start their first transformation so this is something really will pick up we are seeing some very interesting uh, you know use cases coming up and just to touch on the the transformation pillars you know there are four things i would say i i've shown only three things here i will tell you the fourth thing three things is people are trying to do front end only changes somebody says that and you know, i interestingly i saw somebody talking about lipstick to a pig right nobody is thinking of changing the pig but a lipstick to a pig that's what front end only somebody is trying to do front end plus some middleware and lastly you know there is what they call it as parallel core or true digital bank a large commercial bank are also trying to launch a new digital a neo neo bank challenger bank digital attacker banks whatever new term can come in so they are trying to create it see the experience successful start moving to that into that shankar we have lost your voice if you can come yeah, it's better now it's better now yeah. and and last i since i didn't put it some of the organizations they just stay do nothing right so that's <laughs> that's also i have seen it as a because of they want to watch and wait and watch so so how uh, tcs banks you know uh, how we are supporting i mean most almost everybody would be knowing tcs uh, and also tcs banks but just to give you a quick background TCS uh, Financial Solutions is a strategic business unit of TCS, which focuses only on the product side of the business, and we have branded our product under the brand name called TCS Banks, uh, covering banking, capital markets, insurance, all three segments. And we have we are proud in saying ourselves as we have the largest collection of components. Just aligned to what Chetan said that you know modular componentization. so it's all in our in our dna right from the design and uh, you know creating enterprise and consumer apps for the financial industry today in this in this era of transformation you need to have uh, you know faced migration this component story will help you to do that in a in a seamless manner we have customers of all sizes in different markets we have we have the two largest core banking in the world running on tcs banks and obviously we have 450 installations on banking capital markets and insurance and just uh, the last thing i want to touch about we can move on to the next slide uh, uh, i'll take that okay so how do we enable digital transformation leveraging tcs banks right there are key areas data networks and ecosystems scale for total cost of ownership and flexibility and business agility which is speed of delivery stability your complete agile method of uh, you know building the solution delivering the solution ci cd devops kind of ongoing managing we have we have some customers who are completely on agile which is a true core banking uh, ci cd devops they get daily changes into their product that's a level of maturity we will get into going forward we have tools to support this uh, quart is our uh, uh, you know trademark for our blockchain capabilities banks adk is the is the application development kit for channel ui ux we are completely on cloud we can we can uh, ccs banks can run on aws uh, azure uh, tcs enterprise cloud providing uh google or all all cloud can run we have a tcs banks data data lake to clear the to manage the whole data layer and analytics and the apis to which are all published on the marketplace for the whole world to consume and everything is available on a sandbox thank so, you so much shankar for your insights and it's been time for the poll 2 where we would like to really know from viewers what's the primary inhibiting factor on the cloud adoption for the core banking i'll request everyone to vote while uh, we will have the next presenter on the webinar rahel ekbal
very interesting yeah cyber security concerns so regulatory restriction cyber security bank internal compliance and knowledge availability a lot of people are still voting so let's give them a 10 seconds more we we'll request everyone to vote very interesting uh, cyber security is a number one concern for cloud adoption followed by regulatory restrictions i think central banks not having the comfort with global clouds followed by banks internal compliance and knowledge are near each other so moving now to the next presenter may i invite rahil ikbal rahil can you hear us good afternoon everyone can you hear me yes we can uh mutaza can you uh, allow the video as well if possible yeah i think you just need to share from your side yeah we can, we see, can you. see you okay perfect okay thank you uh, chetan um and as uh, we had been discussing the overall situation with the post pandemic uh, scenario how the uh, banks are looking at not just from their overall uh, standpoint system standpoint but also uh, specifically looking into the core banking side and as uh, very much uh, mentioned by our uh, valued guest uh, overall yes the api is the cloud uh, all of those discussions are happening within the organizations um, uh, however what we see is the the paradigm shift coming in the the digital framework or the new approach or why do banks wants to actually go for a new approach uh, after investing so much money uh, uh, into their existing systems uh, are they willing to go uh, digital at the core do they want to go digital at the core those have been the discussions which has basically uh, increased uh, i must say during this uh, covid situation by looking at uh, a lot of scenarios uh, previously the discussion was that yes they would like to have something of that sort but that was not the primary uh, requirement at that time but since this pandemic uh, what it has brought out the actual uh, challenges with the legacy systems uh, have not been able to cope up with uh, they have not been able to uh, they have not been agile enough to support uh, the the paradigm shift with the customers are actually looking at if you may go to the next slide so the new paradigm basically looks after a mobile first approach where all the customers want to be connected every uh, every moment they don't want to be looking at just the the branch of physical interference or uh, interactions with the bank but they always want to be connected uh, real time and hyper personalized requirements uh, and that's where legacy systems have not been able to support that approach uh, data first Uh, the not just the capturing of the data we've seen legacy systems have been accumulating tons of source of data uh, but they have not been able to utilize it to basically come back to the clients come back to the bank and say okay this is what you need to do these are your next step of actions these are the products which you should be looking at uh, that they have not been able to do that so the utilization of data is missing from the legacy uh, monolith systems uh, and hence they have not been able to do contextual engagement with their customers what do they say how do they say what do they offer at what time do they offer so advisory component was missing uh, from these monolith legacy systems and of course as the poll mentioned the security the governance the risk of even thinking of putting up a legacy system on a cloud opens up a huge pandora box of cyber security and the availability of whether those systems can be protected or not so what we saw was in the previous era it was a very siloed approach when it was be it any system be it any unit or uh, be it any layer so what you see on the screen is between sales governance core and operations they were all managing silos they had their own systems which did not used to talk to each other the experiences the application layer the data and the infrastructure were also disjointed highly disjointed 
And what we saw that opportunity and we went into the market and we recrafted our product lines and say, okay, how can we basically bring those disjointed platform, disjointed stakeholders onto a very seamlessly integrated platform? So the customer has an end-to-end -end experience, not a fancy mobile app with someone at the back sitting and doing the entries, a complete journey, not just a customer journey, but from an employee, from a bank's uh, internal operational journey as well. So we saw that opportunity, we, we capitalized on it, and we came out with a product which was completely integrated across product lines, across silos, across units, across stakeholders. So our, uh, I would like to share with our participants a case study which we did recently where we took the whole bank into uh, with the digital core and peripherals. Uh, it is the UAE's first digital challenger bank offering, uh, which would basically be offering both retail and corporate banking for the first time on a full virtual model. Uh, the, the platform which we, uh, which we basically did for the, for the bank was completely API driven. Not a single screen is being used from a core perspective. Everything is completely driven using process uh, APIs and open banking inspired APIs. And I'll tell you what was the rationale behind that. It was basically what the, what the client wanted that they should be able to create experiences for their clients whenever they want, not subject to what the core banking can do. So our APIs had to be fully open, fully fine grained. So tomorrow, no matter what experience a product team comes up with, they can utilize those 200 plus out of the box, open banking inspired APIs to basically create those experiences and hyper personalized experiences, I must say. And the idea was to basically take these APIs and publish it out to the development, uh, development partners, not just in, inside the bank, but to their SaaS partners, to the other developers who would like to contribute towards customer experiences. So this has a built-in API gateway, which allows for the security of those uh, processes, security of the accessibility of APIs within the bank. And we basically were able to host it uh, as the first UE's Azure cloud stack. So this would be the first Azure's use case in the country where a local data center where they basically went live uh, last year, it will have the full end-to-end -end banking experience, not just core, but completely 28 systems on the cloud with full uh, native, uh, native functionality uh, using end-to-end -end DevOps, Azure DevOps, containerized models for AKS, uh, for full CI CD uh, delivered over Azure stack. So we were able to deliver and be compliant with the modern requirements of this challenger bank on an Azure stack. So it does not stop us going on to AWS or GCP as well. Uh, however, we try to keep ourselves very agnostic to such uh, cloud vendors and we support everyone. What was the key principle behind going digital core? Four principles were seen from our in experience. People first perspective. You can't be uh, product focused. You need to be customer focused. What does your customer want? And that's why our APIs were designed in a way that the product teams can decide what experiences they want to give. And then delivering the promise. Because every time when we say digital transformation, we've seen people talking about digital agendas, they come up with a mobile app and they say, oh, this is digital banking. That's not. So you need to deliver on the promise of actually doing digital transformation within the organization. The mindset has still not changed. The mindset is still the old school legacy mindset, I must say. Uh, hence, it, is, it, was, it was a key principle for them to accept the digital core mentality when basically designing their processes. In order to allow them to do this, we had to basically have a frictionless API integration model. So 200 plus APIs, fully RESTful APIs, we had to connect to 28 systems and they were all on our legacy models like ISO 8583, SOAP, XML, SQL, MQs. We had to collate everything, put it onto the platform and share standardized RESTful APIs. Uh, and we did that very seamlessly uh, in, in, in less than four months. And that was the speed to market. The bank was basically able to uh, deploy 
and configure the core banking for retail and corporate banking in just less than four months. And we basically wanted to basically utilize the cloud. What makes it different is the approach of composability and modularity. How are you able to break up your components, break up your modules and utilize when you want it? So if I want to do trade finance, if I want to do uh, SME finance, I, can, I should be not restricted to what core has right now. I should be able to derive my experiences, derive my processes using the APIs. And that was the, 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 the backend work which we had to do in our R&D teams that it should allow for all of those processes to be created. Next, please. As I mentioned, robust open API layer was the heart of it, where you can actually have shared experiences, actionable intelligence, uh, uh, you can connect easily with your systems, existing systems, external systems. There is no limitation. Today, the bank has approaches towards SaaS models. So they are con contracted with SaaS suppliers. They're on private cloud suppliers. They're open developers. So we had to basically allow everyone to connect seamlessly and securely so that the collaboration is there. And we basically covered all the APIs in terms of the security layer, the governance layer, and the functional layer. And how we did basically leverage the cloud is basically a complete holistic approach to it. It was not just putting up a VM. It was not just buying a VM on the cloud and putting up your software. It was an end-to-end -end journey. Now today, with the push of a button, the core banking system, which we have designed, can be deployed in less than seven minutes onto a fully containerized model. And if there is any traffic coming into the, into the bank, the system can actually enhance uh, both vertical and horizontal in less than seven minutes. That is a complete new thing for the market that how can a core banking be deployed and be available to your customers in less than seven minutes. And this is what we were able to achieve using the, 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 the cloud infrastructure from Azure. So that was our experience. Uh, it was a complete new experience when it comes to GCC. We have seen this experience in, in, in European regions, uh, but when it comes to GCC, it was a completely new experience for our client, for ourselves, our teams. And during this COVID situation, we were able to support our, our client uh, in actually delivering this digital, the true digital agenda. Thank you so much, Rahel. Quite informative and interesting. So we'll move to the next panelist. Uh, Mr. Venkat from Explore has been helping the clients, doing the core banking uh, with a lot of automation and innovation QA. So Venkat. Yeah, is uh, Yeah, go ahead. Okay, and this time, yeah. So, uh, thank you, Chetan, uh, for the opportunity. So, if you could just move to the first slide, yeah. Okay, so uh, we have been talking about this core banking for quite long, for almost for the last 50 years. Uh, just to give a perspective, how it has got evolved from the late 70s to 2020. So just to give a perspective about that. So most of us is talking about core and we have been talking about core, uh, uh, core banking solution. But what is this core? What is this core is all about? Centralized online real-time exchange. Most of us has been talking about that, but we, we are not sure about the full form also. And uh, in terms of uh, late 70s and 80s, if you see the core banking are all uh, mainframe based uh, and um, it, is highly, it is highly inflexible and it cannot be customized. And it is used more like, like a, a data operations systems. So if moving on to uh, 2020, if you see the system is highly robust, technology agnostic, and uh, it is basically you, you can use uh, the, you can use reuse the components, uh, a business components, and also uh, it, it has an advanced architecture. So uh, really uh, technology technology agnostic. So uh, that's the way it has got evolved uh, from 1970s to or 2020. If you could move to the next slide. Yeah. So uh, at a glance, who are we? Uh, so uh, at Exclio, our core area is basically um, ma uh, management consulting, 
um, and we do uh, engineering services as well as uh, uh, as well as end to end engineering services. So uh, we are a 1.1 billion company with 15,000 employees uh, spanned across 30 countries with 38 nationalities with a whopping 25 million person hours of testing which we have done till date with 30 plus core banking experience. So that's that's where we we are XPO Solutions Limited. Just a uh, yeah. So uh, oh, with respect to key challenges and issues uh, uh, with respect to old legacy system, just just to touch up on certain areas like legacy is basically having issues in terms of documentation and manual process. There is not much of a straight through processing over there, and it lacks scalability uh, and also um, due to the custom code, it is having issues with respect to um, customization. And also it is uh, highly unlikely to integrate with the uh, other third party platforms. So, and also the cost is also on a uh, maintenance cost is also on a high. So these are all some of the key challenges uh, which customers are facing with respect to the legacy systems. If you would move to the next slide, please. Yeah. So, okay. So what is this journey is all about from 70s to 2020. So how it has got evolved and what are all the solutions which is available with respect to the core banking, which we are covering in this slide. So oh, to start with, uh, I mean, uh, my core speakers have spoken much on the cloud side. Uh, so uh, uh, in fact, yes, cloud is one of the uh, uh, technology which most of the banks are adopting software as a service where uh, you don't need to run on the premises, it is on the cloud and uh, and uh, the user can use it at any point of time, anywhere, it's on the it's on the internet. So uh, that is on the cloud side. And uh, we, we also spoken much on the uh, SaaS bank in the back, uh, bank in the box where a modularized approach. Nowadays, uh, a lot of banks are um, uh, checking on individual modules. They want to uh, take individual modules component wise. So that is also there with respect to SaaS bank in a box that is got transformed. And in terms of upgrade, uh, bank, banks are not only upgraded, you can see there are a lot of upgrades which is happening in uh, GCC, in uh, UAE, as well as in India. So upgrade is not only happening in terms of application, also in terms of product, in terms of process, in terms of data. And uh, yeah, of course, uh, and needless to say, on the digital, uh, there are banks which are completely going on the digital uh, side where uh, they're not even... A, a small element of human touch over there, uh, completely they are going on digital. Um, and apart from that, you have the uh, multi-country rollout um, where you have country-based customizations uh, where the priority was there. And apart from that, all these countries have different regulations and other steps. So these are all uh, some of the key areas and transformations and solutions which has happened over the period of time in the uh, core banking systems. So if you could just move, uh, next one is, uh, of course, my co-speakers have also spoken much on this area where, what is this uh, next gen digital core banking? Uh, so some of the key features uh, just to touch upon is having a lot of stuff which are spoken on the open APIs, uh, which banks are adopting and it's uh, cloud, uh, cloud ready where on the SaaS or a PaaS model and it's uh, completely technology diagnostic and uh, banks can continuously uh, do their product innovation over and above, which is not in the case of a, a legacy system. And uh, it's highly secured and scalable. And also uh, with respect to the uh, reduction in cost, uh, mainly banks can uh, use uh, robotic process automation as well as the artificial intelligence and machine learning. So uh, these are all some of the uh, key uh, next gen digital core banking uh, uh, items which is there, uh, which gives a real benefit to the bank in terms of their uh, cost effectiveness or in terms of in terms of their uh, product upskilling or analytics driven results. Next slide, please. Okay, so uh, this is an important slide where uh, how Explio uh, uh, it will help customers uh, across the uh, software development lifecycle journey where at the early stage, right from planning uh, till the release management. So uh, we have uh, we have different services such as requirement assurance where at the early stage itself, we could be able to uh, unearth the gaps on the requirement side and on the, uh, and on the coding side um, uh, during the eliminate the parameter and the integration defects. 
moving on quickly on the regression side uh, mainly on the uh, uh, quality assurance side uh, we have uh, sit uat and performance testing which we used to do where uh, with respect to the testing we have our uh, uh, for all the line of business we have our standard repository which is available which can uh, uh, upfront save close to around 20 to 25 percentage of the uh, cost to the um, to the client as well as and some of the ancillary services also we can provide such as uh, um, um, implementation rollout uh, support and uh, branch simulation support and other such. So in terms of technology, yes, we are uh, technology agnostic and our uh, real time uh, and we have our own proprietary framework with respect to our uh, automation regression framework uh, pack where uh, that is robust enough, uh, it's very scalable and it can be, it's compatible uh, with uh, with all uh, technology as well as uh, all the tools, even open source or uh, licensed tools. So uh, with that, uh, we would be able to completely reduce uh, uh, the cost for the client. Sorry, excuse me, can you just move? With that, can you, we can completely uh, reduce the cost uh, with respect to the automation pack creation. So now, apart from this, uh, we are also having um, the performance and uh, security testing, uh, which are also uh, been a part of our uh, services. Yes, you can go. Okay, so uh, I would like to give, see, uh, the previous slides, which I've just run through quickly because it's all uh, what has happened before in 70s and how it has come to 2020. So this is our uh, success story. Uh, uh, I mean, I would like to give two success stories with, uh, with the Middle East clients. One is uh, the first success story is in the Middle East, which we helped both in their um, greenfield implementation as well as in their upgrade. This bank is one of the topmost uh, bank in the Middle East, where uh, currently uh, we have already done with their uh, help, uh, help them with our uh, greenfield implementation way back in 2008, and now we are helping them uh, for their uh, upgrade in the CBS. So basically, if you see, they have around uh, seven entities uh, across six countries. They are doing this implementation. So uh, the problem statement, what we can call it here is they don't have a baseline document as such uh, with respect to their requirements. So uh, with our rich industry experience, uh, what we have done is uh, we have created the requirements for the upgrade and we have run through with them and uh, with our uh, rich uh, repositories, which we are having uh, for each and every line of business. So uh, we have made all the test cases. It's around whopping uh, 66,000 test cases, uh, which we have done across four and the ancillary uh, and the interfaces. So uh, this helped the client in reducing their cost drastically in terms of their design. And we also automated them in terms of automation. We have done an automation pack, uh, which completely reduced the time to the market for them. And also, uh, and also uh, on the cost reduction. So uh, uh, this is uh, for this client, uh, basically, uh, so uh, at the end, the clean requirement has gone to the production mainly and uh, saved around 20 percentage on the um, uh, design stage. And also uh, we have helped them in branch simulation as well as the production support. So this is one of the key success story, which actually, uh, actually starts in 2008 and still it is ongoing with this uh, premium bank. So next, uh, another uh, one more story uh, with respect to the uh, another client in Middle East. This is one of the premium client in Middle East, uh, uh, one of the big bank in Middle East where uh, this year uh, actually uh, replaced the legacy system with the commercially official product actually. And this is a multi-country rollout which we have spoken sometime back. They have done this for five countries. So the challenge here is basically they are having around uh, 130 surviving applications, which is a whopping 130 surviving applications and uh, all, almost a, uh, another uh, critical challenge which we face is the requirement is complete, uh, continuously getting changed. So uh, uh, what area which we help them uh, in fact is on the uh, continuous automation for them and also on the requirement assurance side where uh, we have identified a lot of critical gaps across all these countries in terms of regulatory in terms of compliance or also for the customization. So uh, this transformed this uh, on time and the, um, and, uh, and the clean requirements has gone into the production and we have support and it has seamlessly rolled out uh, uh, to the production and they've started uh, operating seamlessly across all these uh, five countries. Thank you so much Venkat uh, for your insights and I think uh, it's 
again uh, time for our third poll and which is very interesting in terms of automation how many of you believe that a typical automation in co-banking qa uh, what is the value you think is appropriate uh, from yet to adopt to minimum automation to a selective automation and a significant automation especially in covid-19 situation where most of the users are not able to return back to their branches return back to their offices and most of the people are still working globally out of the home so very interesting uh, build up uh, with quite a few people believing in automation and especially given its core banking the uh, like kind of people having some kind of let's give 30 seconds more for the automation to complete meanwhile there is an interesting question uh from one of the users that where should one start for a large bank where there is a global co-banking initiative and they are working on an old generation 20 year old co-banking old middleware so where where should they start their digital journey rahel would you like to go for it yes yes uh, so so the journey begins at with the mindset change uh, and i see the mindset has already been changed that they want to explore new avenues and they want to basically get out of that uh, the the legacy approach so from my perspective um, the approach would be to see uh, it would not be a full fledged uh, move it has to be step by step approach look at your customer segments pick up one segment uh, transform that segment itself and then basically uh, continue your journey towards adding more segments to it uh, it could be very overwhelming uh, if you take all these segments together so i would suggest uh, retail being the uh, an up, a, a very uh, approach uh, easy approach in terms of offering new experiences uh, can be taken care of um, and from that perspective you should be looking end to end the discussion is not either you should be looking at front end or the middle layer or the back office it it has to be an end to end journey but segmented approach from your customer base perspective interesting very interesting answer uh rail completely agree with you another interesting question about asia pack in australia why would you not see a large number of initiatives of core banking compared to other part of the world in asia especially in australia So I'll go to my colleague Shankar, who has a global experience on the core banking. Shankar, your view? Yeah, yeah. Thanks, Chetan. In fact, uh, I saw the question; it was pretty interesting. Uh, yeah, I, I would say I think uh, you know they are slow on the big transformation, but we are seeing uh, we are seeing there are a lot of banks which are trying to go into. uh the new generation challenger banks that's that's a that's a trend we are seeing in in australia not not a rip and replace kind of an opportunity we are seeing there and there are very few of them coming on kind of component replacement like you know maybe they they have a very old legacy 20 year old legacy of mortgages they want to carve out mortgages so those are the kind of changes but uh, but definitely we see traction on the challenger neo banks or digital attacker banks plus component story there very That's interesting my... interesting another question on ai ai does not appear in the key features of the core banking and again uh, shankar would you like to give a view on ai and automation uh, especially given you have some interesting use cases you've seen at tcs oh yeah yeah i i really don't know why they they had construed that ai is not a uh, you know uh, it's not in the features in the core banking ai is embedded in the whole core banking transformation in fact the, the case study which i presented that 6 minutes uh, with six clicks uh, digital lending that entire journey had so much ai embedded in you know either from an analytic standpoint or from uh you know machine learning everywhere you know ai is i would say ai is embedded it, it's not that you have to explicitly call that out 
that's how I would pursue Chetan on this. Interesting, quite interesting. Now let me share the results of the poll on the automation. And Venkat, I would like to you to comment on this poll uh, in terms of what you were expecting as an answer versus what you've seen. Significant number of people believe uh, it's a significant automation between 50 and 90. Very close selective 25 to 50. And a very small community believes only minimum automation. When could you want to comment on your view on need of automation in core banking? Yeah, yes, uh, of course, Staten. Yeah, I mean, so the, it is the poor outcome has come on the expected level only. So the kind of technology which we are into and uh, how the core banking is transforming over the years definitely uh, the kind of automation which people are also expecting is on a very high side they don't want any manual uh, testing no more actually or a minimal level of manual testing so they are expecting a very high level of uh, automation and also uh, in terms of reducing their cost and their faster time to market quite interesting last two questions and uh, Rahil next one goes to you uh, how about microservice implementation as part of the core banking both at component level and integration level. Would you like to comment on it? Yes, so microservices architecture uh, is the heart of it, uh, which would basically will enable uh, seamless API integrations and seamless experiences being provided. So microservices and combining that with the cloud offering, as I mentioned with, uh, with the likes of uh, OpenShift or uh, with the likes of AKS uh, per se, uh, definitely makes a huge impact, uh, both from a cost perspective as well as from an operational standpoint. Very interesting. And a last question, which is around implementing core banking remotely. And again, having an open heart surgery, a surgeon being remote. So very, very interesting. And yeah, that's what it is. Uh, we have a situation where in a country where core banking is going live and supplier is not in the country. Supplier is in India, uh, testing company is not in the country, they are in another geography. Uh, client user resources are working from home and logging in remotely. So it's really interesting how this is going uh, through a virtual uh, uh, Zoom based support center where all of the damn champions are logging virtually raising their issues with respect to change management, with respect to system. Promptly, uh, clarifications are provided. Uh, we can monitor things. We are able to publish the status of the core banking, status of uh, usage of transactions, volumes, a status of number of tickets, and number of tickets are open versus resolved. So a series of dashboards, which comes really handy, and a coaching of a lot of uh, training, real life training offered to Zoom and team. So you are able to train a large chunk of staff, not a batch of 15, batch of 20. You can train a batch of 250, batch of 300. So it's the model of remote has its own benefits and advantages and people have adopted it to quite well. So thank you so much all the panelists and fellow panelists and participants. It's great. We had close to 160 participants at the peak. Uh, many, many thanks for participation today.